afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, welcome to another exciting propaganda cast from the host, Imperial Day. My sincerest apologies for the delay. Tragically, again, the sound issue appeared with this weird buzzing and the rest of the sound also getting considerably weird. I have not quite got an idea why. It could be some sort of temporary issue. We have had that before, or it basically means I have to get a new headset again, which is considerably less fun, but there you go. Either way, I hope to have the issue resolved soon. I just hope it's not a recurring one. Either way, we're going to be watching a 1 versus 1. We're going to be watching Lucky Delay, fighting for the Wehrmacht, fighting for the 341st Sturmgeschütz Brigade. Or Brigade, a slight reference to the fact that he likes to use assault guns, but also because, well, you know, why not? Doesn't have to be divisions all the same, and the brigades were rather interesting. Hang on. And that was my Skype. My apologies again. Not really going too well for me this day. We are seeing a free pioneer start out here from him, and opposing him shall be Baba Chunga, the... I'm not even sure how to describe this name, Baba Chunga. It's... Baba Chunga. Fighting nonetheless here, though. Taking on the fight for the 3rd Armoured against the 3rd and 41st. The Assault Gun Brigades for Sturmgeschutz Brigade were a rather interesting concept. They were not actually brigade-sized units. They were basically an Assault Gun Battery, that is a battalion-sized unit. With some infantry added in some cases, that was basically the difference. They'd have an infantry company, some pioneers, and, well, that was it. We are, though, seeing a free engineer start up from Baba Chunga and a jeep. At the same time, we see Schwimm Magnet for Lucky Stelay, so in that sense, I mean, it's rather mirrored in what sort of build orders they are. Well, the closer you can get to mirrored. Jeep heading right, Schwimm Magnet heading west. Looks like the Pioneers are going to get fired a bit here. Jeep moving in, opening up 30 caliber, blasting away at the poor Pioneers. Engineers moving in there, and Schwimmagen getting the drop on the Engineers on the left-hand side. On the other hand, who shall be the winner? The Pioneers are definitely taking quite a bit of damage while taking points. Whereas the Engineers seem to be taking very little damage from the otherwise. MG42 nicely mounted there on the Schwimmagen. Pioneers getting pushed back from there. Engineers taking up a nice dominating position within the house, occupying it. Part of the Occupy Langrim movement, for all I know. MG42 up next for Lucky Delay, adding some considerably heavier machine gun fire to his forces, but will be a bit lacking in the infantry department. And the pioneers here have been taking absolutely atrocious damage, whilst the engineers have taken no damage practically from the goddamn MG42 mounted on the Schwimmwagen. Helmut, have you been drinking? Have you been at the candy again? Du dummer Teufel. And at the same time, we are seeing the MG42 moving up, and Lucky Slay actually placing it right outside the bloody windows. I'm not entirely sure what he's hoping to achieve here. And we see the Jeep flanking, making this pretty much a very, very silly maneuver. MG42 pushed back, Pioneers moving in, pulling it back. Rifleman moving up against the MG equipped Shrim Mag, and the Shrim Mag slowly begins, slowly begins pulling back, not slowly, whatever that means. More units on the way for Lucky Slay. Hopefully, he gets some infantry about. Damn bloody tame. Engineers getting blasted from in the premises of the house. Not doing too well there. Schwimmwagen is getting repaired. Fultzgrenz moving up. So some actual infantry out now. For Lucky Soleil. Papa Chunga getting a second squad of riflemen out. The Fultzgrenz pushing in. Against the house. The engineers occupying. Finding away the grease gun. Taking a bit of damage. But the engineers have quickly dropped. The Schwimmwagen securing three... Two kills on them as they try to vacate the premises. Now the jeep itself is getting pushed off already, and though Baba Chunga holding most of the map. No mines though from Baba Chunga by the looks of it. No flame throws either. Advance going up by Lucky Soleil. MG42 looks to be taking up position there. Shrimp Magnet heading east. Jeep getting engaged by Falconers and Pioneers. Engineers moving up to support. Pioneer bites the dust. Left behind. The engineers pushed off. Too much fire being directed against them. And the jeep beats a hasty retreat. Beep, beep. Here goes the jeep. Right past the false grenadiers. And we're seeing some more pioneers moving up. Now flame flows from Lucky Soleil. Increasing his overall firepower. He still seems to be a bit lacking in the infantry department. MG4 moving up. Going to get a flanking position on the rifle behind the wooden cart. But they do manage to get out there in the nick of time. MG4 blasting away. And the wooden cart actually falls to pieces. It was not made to be bulletproof tragically. Though I imagine some poor farmer will be a bit disappointed to see his favourite wooden cart destroyed. 
snipe route, although, I mean, in this case, Papa Chunga will now, of course, be aware of it, obviously. So, one stream, I can run first, because one MG and one sniper so far for Lucky Delay. Interesting force composition, but not really directed towards anything, and... Certainly could result in him getting easily flanked. Shrimman getting a bit prepared. Four kills, that's nice. At the same time, supply are going up pretty quickly for Papa Chunga, who's only got two rifle squads and a sh jeep. He could be trying to rush for an armored car, which would be a pretty quick rush. And what's going on for Lucky Soleil? Nothing there, nothing there. He must be a bit like a wizard hiding his tricks up his sleeve. Well, a magician, stage magician. Flame first in, and this MG42 crew was sent up ahead without anything to support it, meaning it's going to be pretty exposed. Almost already dead, and the Jeep, oh, the MG gunner just sort of picks the right door and legs it. His MG on his shoulder, and he's running. The only thing that keeps him running is his faith in final victory for the Third Reich. I mean, that's pretty much it, because his body seems right about ready to give up with that sliver of health left. A point. Scout here. Jeep heavily damaged, though, Schwimmagen. All right condition now that it's been repaired. Volkskrenn is moving up. Engineers getting pushed back by the Schwimmagen. Pioneers moving up the right-hand side. Engineers getting engaged again. And going for that strategic point as well. Snipers moving up. And we're seeing a second sniper for Lucky Slay. This is a rather, I would call it a bit unfortunate unit composition. It's going to be rather dependent partly on your solid, you know, awareness of the map. But, you know, also just great micromanagement because, I mean, he's not going to have a lot of infantry. And he's not going to have a lot of MGs. He's going to be in many ways quite vulnerable. He can do a lot of damage, but he can also easily end up taking a lot of damage as well. And he can't, you know, withstand that damage. In fact, here we looks like the sniper could go down within seconds. And we do see the Panzerfaust quickly avenges the sniper with a Panzerfaust right through the frontal part of the jeep. But at the same time, that was still a sniper loss. That was still a sniper that did not manage to do a lot of damage. And this sniper is already in trouble. I mean, really, that's one of the dangers of, you know, that many snipers, not enough infantry or anything else. You do risk having your snipers quite exposed and quite easily overrun. So in that sense, I mean, that's going to be a bit of a kick to the stomach with a knee right there by Baba Chunga. He Baba Chunga had his snipers. That was absolutely dreadful. Now we're seeing the Yamaka rolling up, getting off a nice good shot there on the false Canadier. Blasting him to bits and leaving him his very own little crater. Though we do see a Panzerfaust on return and damaging the engine, blowing up the engine compartment. And then the armored skirts appear. Oh my goodness, the timing right there. Schwimmagen holding up the rifle right there. Sniper moving up again. Though again, heavily wounded. If the Jeep was to move down there, I mean, that sniper would go down. Then again, there's no Jeep at the moment for Baba Chunga. Baba Chunga lacking in the infantry, the, well, Jeep department. Armored car moving down the right hand side. Mine's going down for Lucky's delay there. That's good. He could also consider one there. Or, well, there's also one there. That's actually pretty great. Kriegbag is going up for Lucky Soleil, so at least he's not going to be completely defensive, but nonetheless he's a bit exposed. Armored car missing the pioneers, a penny laying down mines, that's just disgraceful. That is just disgraceful for the Jeep there. And then he's moving forward straight. You saw the mine, you saw the mine going down, Baba Chunga. I mean. Really, that's just one huge Baba Chunga you made there. I mean, moving engineers into a mine you saw being laid down. Tisk tisk. Mine's going down the middle of the road. Fortress moving up there again. Very, very little infantry for Lucky Soleil. I mean, it's not really a solid force composition. It's not a strong force composition. It's a very fragile force composition. We already saw one part of it pretty much get run over by a jeep. But the armored car's moving out there. And there's no pack actually within response range, only Panzerfaust. Fultzkan is immediately coming under fire. Quite a bit of resources actually being floated by Baba Chunga. I mean, come on. No point in Baba Chunga and your resources. And yes, I end up using Baba Chunga just as anything, because again, what the bloody hell does it mean? It's just such a silly name. We do see a pack rolling out for Lucky's Delay, whatever infantry unit has been sent in to support this Stuart Brigade. Supply lines are broken. We have territory cut off from supply. Troops moving left and moving right, moving north. Riflemen moving up, opening up on the Pioneers. Flamethrower Pioneers waiting in reserve. 
And there we see the sniper again. <laughs> sniper heavily wounded. Mine goes off, killing one false grenadier. And it's time to have a look at Lucky's delay. And at that same very moment, stormtroopers arrive. The elite and infantry are the Wehrmacht. The toughest, the baddest, the stormtroopers. And they are, in fact, some of the toughest troops in the game. In fact, with Veterans Free, they have the most health for any infantry unit. They arrive and they get the sniper. They pretty much just walked in, and the sniper sort of holding himself going, Ach du lieber, I should have gotten a medic pack. Stormtroopers though keep fighting the elite of the big light infantry for the assault guns, although I'm pretty sure the 341st didn't really get it in time for Normandy, their infantry company, but let's not get into details. But nonetheless, stormtroopers are quite tough infantry, they are tougher than grenadiers, but still do the same damage, which means they're pretty damn tough and pretty damn good. Engineers going for the right hand side. Baba Chunga doing all right. He certainly, I mean, killed two snipers of Lucky Sile. I mean, that's heavy losses for the Germans right there. Schwimmarken, six kills. Stormtroopers moving up, three kills for them. Doing all right. Rifling coming under fire. Sticking to the brushes, thus getting some light cover there. Always good to sort of try and advance through light cover, if possible. Engineers here not doing too well. No, I mean, Pioneers actually. My mistake. I looked wrong. Armor Kyle pulling up, and this armor. Oh no, Schwimmarken! Get out of there, Schwimmagen! Pack opens up and that forces the armor car away. That solves the issue. That resolves the matter. And a third sniper out for Lucky Slay. That's a thousand manpower. In fact, over a thousand manpower so far spent on snipers, and so far, two of them haven't even earned him themselves. And that's definitely something that can give a Baba Chunga the advantage. Another false gunner down. He's down to one man. And even now, I mean, Lucky Slay only has pretty much what can be described as the bare minimum. And he moved in an anti-tank gun without anything to cover it. Nothing to shield it. Nothing to screen it. I mean, Lucky Slay does seem to have a bit of a nasty habit. Again, that's because of lack of infantry. But again, you're just moving in support units without anything in front of them. That's not really good. And the Schwimmbach went down as well. The armor cut. I mean... Oh, oh, the armor car overruns the MG. The sniper's pushed away. And there's not really much left. I mean, he's got one assault detachment, stormtroopers, and flamethrower pioneers. Panzerschreck is on the way, but I mean, he's really knee deep in it. Knee deep in sauerkraut. And it's pretty bad one. Moving up on the right hand side, some pioneers make some slight advances there, but that could easily be seen off by a single rifleman squad. The Panzerschreck, the Raketten Panzerbüchse, is ready for the storm. So, I'm a car runs straight into it. One Panzerfaust could easily see it pretty much disabled. Heinz fires it, and it's a dart. Oh dear. In the SD, there were quite a few Panzerfaust, which were dots, I suppose, but he is just more of a mechanical error with the game. Rather than moving up, they could hit the mine. They're rather lining up for it, the sort of conga line straight into a minefield. Pioneer takes the hit, hits a mine. And he's advancing. And there we go, straight into the mine. And we just saw five men go down. Absolutely dreadful. Flame throws charged the stormtroopers and the pioneers. Fortress provide support already. One stormtrooper though bites the dust. As his troops catch, or his clothes catch on fire. Pani is pushed away with heavy losses. The armored car is definitely a beast. Pack moving up the right hand side. This one has not been recaptured. Recaptured? Not recaptured. I'm not entirely sure what that means, even. But the false guns are moving up. They tried to chase the pack, but the riflemen provided covering fire, rather than making that a bit of a bad venture. We do see a sniper out for the Americans. Baba Chunga pulls out an American sniper. Fox goes moving up, seizing the pack, getting off a nice sniper shot on the rifleman. The rifleman regret not going for more bulletproof helmets. And the sniper needs to be careful. Both snipers, in fact, need to be careful. Rather than advancing, taking heavy losses. Trying to get the pack number two. And there we go. Oh, oh German snipers re revealed and oh, counter snipe. He Baba Chunga, the sniper right in his Baba Chungas. Absolutely down. dreadful. More forces are moving forward. Fulcher is getting pushed away. And now we do see the Sturm Hobbits out, which, uh, which is a assault gun brigade or Stug brigade. We actually have about 12 of those and then 30 regular assault gun Stugs. So a little fun fact there, but the first one out. And it's probably going to be the first of 
many. And again, you do see a lot more of them after the latest patch, basically because, I mean, they're a bit easier to access to come up on wise but also manpower-wise. Meaning, you know, you can get them a bit earlier where you know, they might do a bit more damage. Of course, in Company Heroes 2, you won't see call-off units like that. I mean, you'll need the requisite buildings to get them, and you might even risk they replace another unit. Sniper, they're opening up on the pack. The pack crew regretting they open fire. But the sniper actually seems to have been pulling away. Stu 42 moving out against the American base. Supply art getting blasted. Threatening the precious American supplies. Oh, how dreadful. Rifleman pushed away. MG suppressing the rifleman over there. Sniper doing nothing. No further snipers from Lucky Slay so far, though that I would say is how it should be. Still not a lot of infantry. He needs more infantry. And Engineer Squad down. Taught. Supplier goes down the armor cast, trying a bit to deal with the Stu 42, but not really having much luck. Slowly bleeding out for Lucky Slay as well, though. Another unit went down. And a nice solid push, you know, rather full of infantry. Well, as much infantry as you can. Mustangs and Pioneers. So lots of boots on the ground there. Armored car, though, quick to move in, quick to probably punish. Lucky delay and there we go, rolling out. Quickly gets off a hit, but doesn't actually kill anyone. And Pangus right just hits a bloody part of the fence. Or something else, and... Well, the outhouse is gone. Well, that one is anyways. But really, Heinz. Have you been drinking? Armored car, though, continues to fire away. Engineers right moving up, armor cover running to pop bit from a distance. And Panzer right connects with the armor car, taking it down below half health, forcing the armor car away. And Titank gun out for Babachunga. He has not recruited the German one. In fact, looks like it might have been retaken by Reich. Or perhaps it was destroyed. And a strafing run! Oh, I missed that! I missed a strafing run! Really gutting a lot of the German infantry, pinning them down. Oh dear, oh dear. And looks like poor Heinz is caught beneath a telephone pole. Oh dear. What a tragic fate. A bit of quiet now. Stu 42 not too much. And there we go. He actually managed to take it back, but got decrewed. And a second Stu 42 arrives, really adding in a lot of the high explosive power to try and just blast the Americans to kingdom come. Mining down there, the entrance, that is good. Mining down there, also good. I'm not entirely sure what he's trying to achieve. There might be he's trying to clear out this and create some better fields of fire for his own troops. And Titanka moving out. Pioneer sniped. Other pioneers here a bit trapped on their own. Need to be careful. Pack Alter needs to be careful by other fancies getting sniped. Come on, pioneer, Swick Sook. Verlassen sie die Stellungen! And down to one man, they could get knocked out on the retreat. Sticky bomb on the stew! Bandit <laughs> gets a rifleman! <coughs> Threatening! No Kampfkraft sent as of yet for Lucky Delay. And Titanga moves up, Greyhound moves up. Pioneers moves in, straight into the mess of it. Stu actually gets killing something, but that's just one kill. The rifle instead take a brutal beating by the mine. And the rifle instead forced retreat. <laughs> Thanks for that. Stu 42 crew complaining they think it might be on fire. While pulling back, definitely heavily damaged. <laughs> Damn you hiccups. Can't really seem to catch a break casting today. Rifemen are advancing. And he lost the false kind of his squad in a rather silly manner. <laughs> Rifemen advancing, one man down. Pack creeping up. And the mortar is actually out for Lucky Soleil. While the Rifemen continue their remorseless advance. Getting blasted by the Stu 42, which also continues blasting away without remorse. And the mortar gets sniped. 
Definitely not looking too good there for Lucky Slay as Papachunga Bamba Chungas forward. The mortar crew exposed to a lot of danger. Stu 42 though fires blowing up a lot of dust and apparently frightening the devil out of Baba Chunga who retreats and his sniper almost died while retreating for a sniper but still survived. Blimey. Sniper though oh he's he's gotten two snipers. He's just sniping the devil out of Lucky's delay now. The stormtroopers advance. Greyhound also escapes. Oh, Storms was so close, but the sniper just basically ducks and goes neener, neener, neener. But we see the Storms advancing down to one man. No, Lucky Slay, what are you doing? What are you doing? And the Stool 42 gets a sniper. He just rolls in, fires off a high explosive howards around, and sniper no more. Short bounces off, but that's no surprise. Greyhound, while sort of er originally intended as a tank destroyer, never really amounted to it. Partly because the American Tank Destroyer Doctrine never really understood what the point of a tank destroyer was, ironically. And there were really some messed up attempts, including one which was basically a small anti-tank gun strapped to the back of a jeep. Airborne popping in, probably the American's toughest infantry unit in the game. Equipped with the M1 carbine, which is all right up close, but not really good at longer ranges. They're, in a sense, assault infantry. Of a lighter kind, though. Bit of blasting going on. Again, he's probably trying to clear f fields of fire, which is definitely a nice move. He's trying to do the same here. Stu 42 getting repaired. Still not all of infantry though for Lucky Stilay. He needs that. Baba Chunga sits, takes a break, and there we go, actually pulling up for an assault. MG42 though stops most of it. The MG42 unleashes Holy German Wrath. Stu42 finds a way and misses, doing nothing there. Ryman though manages to sneaking up behind, and we see a grenade. The M2 pineapple grenade gets off. There we go. The MG crew almost armed. Veterans you want for the Ryman. Mortar rounds falling down from above. <coughs> And the Stu gets another kill, but the Mortar crew is in peril and is forced away. Down to two men, and they just barely make it through the gate. Stu 42 in problem. Sticky bomb away. Destroyed engine. Very close. Anti tank are moving up. Ravin dealing with the pack, which reveals itself rather prematurely. And it actually gets itself surrounded, not entirely sure what Lucky Slave was intending there. But he's down one anti-tank gun, in fact. I think he's got no more. There we go. The crew dies. Something considerably less than a hero's death. Greyhound tests the waters a bit. Moves it in front. And two riflemen get hit. Instead of the Greyhound. Sniper waits at the western victory point. Hoping for any craps to take the bait. Quite a bit of manpower being floated by Baba Chunga again. He does seem to have a bit of a habit for flowing resources, though we do see a supply upgrade on the way. That is good. Getting a bit blasted there. The Ravner trying to probably cover the stew in sticky bombs. Mortar crew. And the mortar crew goes down. Strafing run. Apparently did the job with the rifleman. Either way, Storms has also got pinned in the process. Anti tank gun. Overwhelmed by American infantry. And they retreat. Airborne doing all right on the left side. Fallen in 31st though, I in, no, 3 and 41st, I'm in a bit of trouble there. Lacking a bit of a broader unit composition. And again, infantry. Er braucht die infanterie. But he decides he is better than infantry. He's too cool for infantry school. And now he shall be schooled in the art of, well, not having infantry properly. Well, whatever. Storms with them moving up there. Another squad out. So definitely going for the heavy infantry right there. A bit of moving there between the crater and the other troops hiding behind some bushes. Cheeky, cheeky. Victory points are not looking in Lucky Stilay's favor, though we do see a cuff cuff set up. A bit of infantry for the infantry, a bit for the support units, a bit for the armor. 
Stormtroopers sneaking up, Abba moving forwards, rather thinking, haha, we'll overrun those crowds, and then, hey, hang on, where are they? And why are those bushes moving over there? Raffin are moving up though. Pioneers getting pushed away. We do see 242 nearby and the airborne actually exhausted. Oh. They don't actually take a lot of damage right there. MG has actually been recruited by Stormtroopers. That's quite expensive for Lucky's delay. I mean, it's practically there would actually pay off to just use Pioneers. That would almost be more cheap. I mean, you'll certainly get a tough MG crew, but... The question is, is it worth it? Because, I mean, reinforcing all those for the storms will certainly be ex as cost about as much as a full Pioneer squad. Oh uh, well, Stormtroopers MG crew run off. The Stoop Brigade fights onwards. Takes out a nice chunk of the house. Never liked that part, I suppose. Port Airborne versus Blitzkrieg. Drop is asking for coordinates. An anti-tank gun's now ready to be dropped in. I'm coming in towards the left-hand side. Could get a nasty storm. How bits a surprise. And level two veterans here. And a tank depot. I mean, Baba Chung, of course, is probably figuring again. He's seen Blitzkrieg. He's seen Stormtroopers. He's seen storm. How bits is. And of course, he's probably going to see a tiger. So obviously, he needs some tank depots there. He figures. Just in case. And the airborne. Oh, the stormtroopers now got they got the airborne Wehrmacht. I mean sniper airborne style by appearing from the shadows and gunning him down. Even got one airborne in the retreat. Bit unfortunate there. Obviously not though for Lucky Slay. And everybody seems to be having a nice time around the Wehrmacht quarters, enjoying a beer. Ripen advancing up against the 242. We're seeing veteran G2. And the outhouse takes a direct hit with a house shell and actually survives. Although I'm pretty sure you don't want to be in there anymore. It's going to be haunted. Storm to MG advancing straight into everything. Exposing itself to an unfortunate amount of heavy firepower. And we do see a grenade getting locked inside to the premises, killing one, forcing the MG quickly away again. Anti tanka moves out. Baba Chunga holding bravely, but a bit depleted. And we do see sh tanks are out soon for Baba Chunga. Pioneers hiding up in this house here behind the trees. All victory points, in fact, are in the hands of Baba Chunga. Lucky Slay needs something to break out of this. Baba Chunga related lockdown. There we go, the tank is moving out. He could also consider Sherman. And also recruiting the pack with stormtroopers. And the tank will run straight into that. Taking heavy damage, not looking good for Baba Chunga. At the same time, pulling up here, taking heavy losses to stormtroopers and a 242 with an MG mounted. Pioneers could also be doing a bit there. But tank destroyer is in heavy damage, and it's actually. Having trouble penetrating the frontal armor of the Sturmabitzer. We do see an armor car patrolling in. And we do see a strafing run somewhere. Doesn't quite do the trick though. Greyhound has a damaged engine. Pack gets decrewed. 242 moves forward. Others oh, two moves up there. We are needing, going to need some more anti-tank assets on the left side. Airborne rifle right advancing. Airborne recruiting the Pack 38. Getting off a nice shot there on the Sturmabitzer. And Stormt was overwhelming an anti-tank on the right hands. Anti-tank guns are switching hands. Stu 42 looks to go down. Another Stu 42 hits a flank. Stormtroopers hit the flank. But not the ones with the assault rifles because they were there. And a strafing run desperately called in to protect the flank. Just to get their heads down and digging trenches with their faces. And the Stu 42 went down in a blaze of flames. The second Stu 42 in turn. Terrible damage. Stormtroopers need to get out of there. They're down to two men with less than half health. Come on. Lucky's delay. What are you doing? Main gun destroyed, but they have one man left. And the armor car gets him. Another still arrives, but that was a Stormtrooper squad with a panzer strike. Gone for Lucky's delay. Not good at all. Not good at all. Tragic. Horrific. Maddening.
awful. Fearsome fighting, fearsome fighting. Let's go look at Lucky Stilet again, I do believe. He's actually got access to Blitzkrieg now. The Krieg des Blitz. Armor Kalda moves straight into the stool 42 and connects with a howitzer shell, blowing at it and the crew away. Except for the guy in front, he seems to be a bit depressed about the entire affair. And the stool 42 misses. Mein Gott, Richard. What are you up to? Second shot though connects and blows the M10 to bits. Leaving nothing but a wreck and broken dreams. Sherman now advancing, leading the way. Manpower Blitz is up. And again, Manpower Blitz for some reason just makes me think of some sort of dance. Do the Manpower Blitz. But there we go. He's in fact ignoring the Tiger for now. Sherman goes up against his 242. He needs to, you know, use that Manpower Blitz for something. He's got a thousand manpower. And he's he's turning the stool around. That must be an accident. He must have clicked a bit too far. Come on, what are you doing? Where are the resources? Veterans is free for the armor. And we see the Sherman up gun making it considerably more effective against Stooks and Stooks. Clever. Clever. Good. Good. We're still not seeing any a lot of that resource being expended. Pack though arriving. Recruited by a brave a German crew of stormtroopers. Again, stormtroopers. Sherman, though, should be careful, should be careful, should consider moving away. Damage engine, though. Damage engine. Heavy damage from the Stu 42 hitting the rear side, and the anti tank gun gets off a nice hit in the rear arm as well. Oh dear, this suddenly went south for Baba Chunga. And this Sherman went to Baba Chunga. Sort of a sound effect. When it blew up, it sort of just Baba Chunga, and the Germans sort of like. What, what just happened? Veterans is on the way for the support units. Sturm is on the way. Finally using some of all those resources. Uh, so that's good. Stu 42 now with armored skirts to protect against sticky bombs. I've been moving about. Still most of the victory points. Most of the map are in the hands of Baba Chunga. His troops are getting blasted. Getting MG'd. Making a move for the cutoff point there. Storms is finding him versus Rifleman. there. Assault Rifles closing in with the Rifleman. Who shall get the victory there? Of course, he could get off a bun grenade. But no, we see a grenade from the American Center and we see suppressive fire. But there we go. Bun grenade. Rifleman almost wiped out. And a counter move towards the Pioneer. So almost veterans need two. In fact, they are. No, no he cancelled it. He cancelled it instead of getting another assault gun. Another storm gets for the brigade. While the rest are getting repaired. Bit of a tenuous situation that he is in though. Not looking too good. Heavy losses on all sides. Again, he's sort of lacking the forces to really lead the way. He lacks infantry. MG here. And the MG42 taking the point. And forced away. No surprises there, I am afraid. For those that have been hoping for surprise, there is none. But I mean, Bamajuk at this stage actually is taking quite a beating. He's a bit low in infantry himself. In fact, he's quite low in everything, but still, he's, you know, keeping Lucky Slay contained, which can be just as important. But now we're seeing one, two, three, four, five assault guns. Veterans are free. Three of those are Stug, Stug 42s. The last two are, well, Stug 4s. Airborne moving forward, it's getting blasted with high explosive rounds with machine gun fire pioneers nearby providing support. And Veteran D2 being attempted again by, like I say, strafing run gets the pioneers though. Flies right past and absolutely guts the infantry. Assault guns running up here against a tank destroyer. The tank destroyer caught right between. <coughs> <coughs> Needs to be careful. Tank destroyer quickly getting out. And the pioneers getting overwhelmed, assaulted, dreadfully. Though thankfully not sexually. Right now, overwhelming the anti-tank gun. Stug number I don't know moves forward. Anti-tank gun crew fighting bravely, but they are simply no match since they can't actually shoot at the riflemen. 
Stug moves up as well, gets off a nice hit. The Rifle suddenly take a heavy, catastrophic beating. So much automatic fight, and they go down. The Pioneers, the Stugs, everything just kill them. We actually seen quite a few Pioneers now from the Pioneer platoon or whatever that was attached to the Stug unit. Sniper opening on the MG, of course, now an easier target due to Veteran 2 giving the MG crew elite armor. But definitely going to be a very, very heavy MG crew. Stu moves up. And there you go, pushing up this well, right into an anti tank gun tank destroyer as well. And the tank destroyer goes down. But the assault guns continue. The first one leading the way with less than half health. That's all to the Stu 42. Sticky bombs. Blitzkrieg. Blitzkrieg. Anti tank gun fire. Airborne moving up. Blasting away, doing terrible damage, and the stew goes down, the stew goes down. The assault guns continue to fire, but there's still the anti-tank gun. And the pioneers move up at the same time, the stu other two stews are making a blitz maneuver towards the base. Barry's getting hammered. Stug went down. Stug went down the anti-tank and managed another shot, but the pioneers just continue with the power of the blitz creek. They just ruthlessly gun down the anti-tank and crew reminding them of who's the boss now, eh? Venting out the rage of not being one of the most impressive units in the game on the anti-tank gun crew. And we see the second Stug about to get overwhelmed by the recordless rivals. Can they succeed? So little left. The Pioneers moving up and they get it. Veterans you won and they get it. At the same time the Stug 42's blasting away at Baba Chunga's space. Taking the Baba out of his Chunga. Rifling advancing. We see an ad tight tank gun being dropped in and we see the pioneers being assaulted by the riflemen five squads of pioneers that is ten pioneers veterans did two that's actually quite a bit and the riflemen fly away they could actually try and drop a grenade there pioneers going down here airborne getting shots away at the assault guns stormtroopers following up machine guns protecting the left side of the base gone pioneers retreating in the face of the riflemen anti-tank gun recruit what happened to the other one? Didn't he call in another one? Oh well. Tria sent us down. The supply art could go down to Baba Chunga. Supply drop secured. And a bombing run. Bombing run. And there we go. Assault guns almost down. Stormtroopers moving in. Unleashing the might of the right for the airborne. They don't care. They fire up. They want those assault guns. Main gun destroyed and second shot connects. Sending it out of control. Anti tank and moving up. Rifleman moving up. Veteran D2 for the airborne. And the assault gun is almost down. The Stu 42 closed. Buying the farm. Main gun destroyed. And the airborne get it. And Veteran D3. Absolute turnaround right there. And Lucky Delay has just lost five assault guns. Three of them Stooks, two of them Stu 42s. Another one has been called in, but that was bleeding huge. I mean, Papa Chunga's base is scattered. The supply yard is scattered alongside all of the supplies. But he just knocked out a huge amount of resources against Lucky Delay. Devastating. Sherman getting sound for munitions. Lucky Slay is desperate. He needs more resources to fuel his assault gun war machine. And Titan coming forwards. Airborne. Rifleman moving forwards. Going for the victory points, which Lucky Slay is desperately trying to protect to ensure a his a third race. But no. No success. Manpower Blitz and the Tiger arrives. Schwerer Panzer arrives to support the 341st Assault Gun Brigade. And of course the Bavarians are also the Sturm Artillerie Brigade, which I believe, which actually had some other units in it. But still, lots of fun things there. Airborne getting blasted, the Stu 42 continues pulling back, the Tiger rolls in. Might of the Third Reich. 80mm gun, 100mm of armor. And the Stu 42 bites of dust. Pioneers are rushing in to overwhelm the anti tank gun like they did before. Tiger opening up as well. Airborne moving up. Rifleman's providing support. 
Tiger taking a blasting. More pioneers are rushing in. Anti-tank and crew dies as high explosive rounds shatter their bones and their bodies. And we move back to Babachunga. The Tiger bouncing off a few shots. There's the recall his rifles try to penetrate it. Rifle get off a grenade on the pioneers, killing one of the poor bastards. And they recruit once more. A desperate effort to try and knock out the mighty Tiger tank. But the pioneers once more move in. Their submachine guns moving up and pretty much gunning down the rifle ever slowly. And there we go. And a sniper now out for Lucky's delay. He, I don't think he needs snipers, but there you go. The tiger still stands. It still drives. It is still a threat to the United States of America. Tank destroyer now on the way from the tank depot of Baba Chunga. Baba Chunga's definitely looking a bit Baba Chunga. Tank destroy cancel. Resource going to be sent towards something else. Another more sensible project. Tank depot takes a nasty hit. Corrugated iron not really providing the best of protection against such measures. And there we go. Recall his rifles get off. Nice bit of damage right there against the Tiger tank. Down to half health now. Anti tank on dropping in from above. Continued advances on the left flank. Victory points closer going down, and we see the storm troops sneaking up. He's not f gotten double up upgrades for them, that would have been nice. And would pretty much guarantee success for them, I think. But 14 kills nonetheless, nice. Raven moving up, 23. One infantry here, and three armored kills for the airborne. Tiger heavily damaged. Storm troopers spotted by the Raven veteran G2. And the airborne just gets shattered as a high explosive round hits the squad, killing three men in the middle of the road. And the tiger goes down. The tiger is gone and no more grenade on the sniper in the house. He pulls out. But bloody hell, the tiger is gone. A huge loss for Lucky Silay. And now the airborne might try and get the goddamn sniper who's veteran hit too. And we see another pioneer push moving in. in Pretty much setting themselves up at the screen to protect retreating units and to cover the sniper to buy him time to get up a few more shots. But they're simply not enough. They're not strong enough. They're not tough enough. And instead they get pushed off with heavy losses. Pioneers drop left and right screaming, bleeding, swearing. Another Tiger arrives from reserve. The 341st being supported the best it can but sadly it does not have the full Complement of units it needs. And oh, the sniper did survive. I thought the airborne might have gotten it. Tiger rolls forward ever slowly, ever deviously. Bit of quiet. Bit of quiet. Pioneers moving left, bit of sparring with the Tiger. Now we see a Nebelwerfer. Eine Nebelwerfer. Es werft die Nebeln. Sniper gains veterancy, killing Pioneers as they unsuspectingly move up. And into his field of fire. And the outhouse is gone now, except the door which by some miracle, some force of nature, or a force against nature, still stands. Ominous. Speeding this out a bit. Sniper went down. Rockets against the rifle. The veteran C3 rifle could go down to the needle to the fire, to the incendiary goodness hidden within. Satchel charge on the needle of an active veteran, sure, believe makes, makes it move faster, so it quickly dodge it. Airborne take heavy losses. And he, no, they did survive, but that's about it. And game over, I do believe. Lucky Slay realized his game was over there. He'd taken too many losses. He had suffered so much. The basic problem for him, I think, was partly, you know, the lack of infantry. He really needed, he didn't need all those snipers, which he couldn't protect anyways. He needed infantry. He needed boots on the ground. Partly that. Mm, I'm also not quite convinced he needed all those stooks, at least not just those stooks, again he needed infantry to support them, he needed a medic bunker and some other bits. Baba Chunka did alright, was airborne the right choice? Perhaps it did quite alright, but again so could infantry, so could armor. 
So I'm not so much sure about that. But, you know, some of his strafing runs were a bit questionable. His movements sometimes a bit too excessive. But again, I mean, Lucky Sile was really... You know, he spread his forces too thin. He really constantly left units too exposed, in particular the snipers. And the assault gun assault right there again might have gone a bit better had it been supported by infantry. Instead, it rather went down too quickly. So, there you go. Hope you enjoyed this match again. My sincerest apologies for this going up late because again, I had to re-record it. My sincerest apologies. But hope you enjoyed it. If you did, want to provide... You know, subscribe or tell your friends. If you didn't, why not provide some feedback in the comments? You know, what do you think of the match? What would you have done in that case, you know? You know, saying, you know, replay, you know, feel free to follow me on Facebook or Twitter. This is Imperial Dane saying cheers.